Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Frisky Venerable's Playtime. I am Frisky and today we are playing Wasteland 2 Director's Cut on the PS4 because I'm Sony's bitch and it's the only games I play on is the Sony system. So, I have taken the uh, opportunity to create some new characters. You can create characters, you can alter them to your liking. Uh, on the screen you see Seth Leroy Jenkins, Randy Giblets, Jeanette Vasquez, and Miss Diagnosis. Leroy Jenkins is going to be my commander. Randy Giblets is going to be my sniper. Jeanette Vasquez is going to be my heavy. And Miss Diagnosis is going to be my medic. You can, if you wanted to, go into more detail. You can uh, provide backstories to them. Uh, but for the purpose of this, let's play. I don't want to bore you too much, so let's get going. I have my drink in my hand, monster, and we are good to go. Let's go. Oh, and we're going to play on Supreme Jerk because I'm a fucking madman. And, you know, I love the challenge, even though I'm probably going to rage quit quite a bit. Maybe. You never know. So thank you for joining me. Um, little bit of backstory regarding this game. Wasteland 2 is the sequel to the first Wasteland that came out in the late 80s, I remember, if I if remember rightly. And this is like the granddaddy of the Fallout games. So this is what came before Fallout. And then Fallout came out. So, yeah. But for now, intro. I have finished this game only just recently. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting back to it again. Oh, there we go. The new General Vargas. What comes after the end? I don't know. Neither did they. They were just an army engineer battalion constructing roads and bridges deep in the middle of the Arizona nowhere. They didn't know why Armageddon had come. They'd heard radio chatter about an attack on some space-based missile platform. But who had attacked it? Or why? No one knew. What they did know is that the politicians and the generals had finally ended the world. Now, everything was gone. They oh, hell no. Federal prison for a fort. Kicked out the convicts. Got busy starting from scratch. Maybe it was an act of mercy. Maybe they figured that the prisoners would die out in the harsh new world. Whichever, it came back to bite the engineers in the ass. Cultists, criminals, cannibals. Nice. They've been living with the fallout ever since. Good people had survived too. Called for help in the night. And those engineers, those common soldiers, could not stand by and see them die. So they came out of their fort and they helped the survivors defend their homes. And for that, they earned a new name. A proud name, the Desert Rangers. Now, Rangers, I know at times it seems our cause is hopeless, and I know it's hard to say goodbye to a brother in arms. But I want you to know something else. That no ranger who dies in the line of duty will ever be forgotten. Again. 
nor will he have ever died in vain. Or unavenged. There you go. So, what we're going to do is find out what happened to Ace. Thank you, recruits. A stiff bearded older man wearing a hard worn range uniform and a battered old cowboy hat. General Vargas walks with a cane. He's not helpless. He wears a powerful handled revolver on his hip and there are obnoxious on the barrel. Before we continue, if this kicks off, um, let me know if you want me to read out what they're saying, if you want to read it yourself. Because if this is a let's play, let's face it, you want to see something interesting than dialogue. You know, if you wanted to read anything, you'd read a book. So, um, with anything, just give me um, feedback and whatnot, and I'll be happy to take it on board and hopefully improve. Uh, for now, though, let's continue. I appreciate you coming to Captain Ace's retirement party. You hardly knew the man. Appropriate, too, seeing as how investigating his death will be your first duty as a desert ranger. How did Ace die, sir? Ace had been trying to locate a faint radio signal, which has lately been given us cause for concern. We gave him three repeater units and sent him to hook him up to three remote radio towers. This would have allowed us to get a fix on the signal. But sadly, Ace was murdered by unknown assailants right after hooking up the first tower, and his logbook and the last two repeater units were stolen. Happy to be given the opportunity, sir, but are you sure we're ready? Yeah, I know. You've hardly found your feet with us, and here I am sending you on a mission that already got one ranger killed. Well, I wish I had another option, but the desert rangers are spread a little thin right now. Ranger teams Abel and Charlie are out west trying to stop a range war out there from becoming straight up genocide. And Team Baker is up north looking for a way through the radiation that's cut us off from Vegas. I'm afraid the next generation is going to have to lead the charge on this one. The signal is a threat, sir. The voice on those broadcasts disturbed me greatly. They talked crazy talk about a future where man and machine would be one. Worse, it talked about us, the Desert Rangers, specifically. It said it was coming for us. Repeating it, sir? When you get back to the Citadel, talk to our radio expert, Wade Woodson, if you want to know more about the technical details. All I know is the repeaters will upgrade the towers and allow us to zero in on the mystery signal. Where are the radio towers? I'll give you the locations of the towers once you have the repeaters in hand. More important to find them first. You think the logbook was stolen, sir? Don't know, but it wasn't on Ace's person when he was found. Look for it. It might have some clues as to his death. What's the mission, sir? The mission is this. Search the area where Ace's body was found, and do your best to recover his logbook and the repeater units. Then call in your report. If you find the repeaters, I may send you on to finish his mission. Ace's death must be avenged, and it will be. But finding the signal he died trying to track down is just as important. Besides, I got the sneaking suspicion that when you find the one, you'll find the other. Call in, sir? Yes, call in on your radio. Your radio is your lifeline to Ranger Citadel. We'll be calling you with alerts and updates on your current missions, and sending you new missions when we receive distress calls. As rangers, it is your sworn duty to respond to those calls. That is the contract we made with the people of Arizona when we opened for business. Why can we enter the Citadel? Once you prove yourself, the Citadel will be your new home. Consider this mission the final test of your training. If you succeed, you are welcome within our walls. If you fail, then you aren't cut out to be a desert ranger, and we won't let you in. Okay, so... With this game, I didn't show you too much. I'll show you in a minute once we've got past all this. But you can uh, customize your characters to your liking. So some of the traits you can give to them are such as give them a hard ass perk, a smart ass perk, or a kiss ass perk. Those dialogue options become available uh, when you're in conversation sometimes. And whenever you've used one, it gives the character that's associated with that perk XP. 
So, you know, XP is always good for these sort of kind of games, leveling up and everything, especially on this level of difficulty. Oh, we're going to get our asses handed to us, so every little bit of XP is more than welcome. Um, so, yeah, so we've got choices of Hard Ass, Kiss Ass, who's misdiagnosis, Hard Ass was uh, Jeanette Vasquez, and Leroy Jenkins. Um, I. I'm gonna give it to Kiss Ass, who's diagnosis, considering she's gonna be our medic. I want her leveling up with the medikits and what she can use quicker, so we're gonna do it to Kiss Ass. Please, sir, if you're sending us after Ace to kill her, then you've already decided where we were, be. Why not just let us in? <laughs> Kiss an ass already, huh? See, he knows, he knows his shit. Well, some folks in the waste can be persuaded that way. Not everyone. I've been buttered up by the best of them, so I'm wise to those tricks. You get through our doors with deeds, not words, recruits. Good try, though. Where is this area, sir? It's about a day's walk east from here. Don't mark it on your map. Okay. This is the world map. Um, the game plays differently, so when you leave... No, hang on. There you go, okay. So when you leave um, locations like Ranger Citadel, you come in the world map. Your world map is just you as a cursor and you walk around. It plays out a little bit like Final Fantasy, where you walk around and you could come and encounter you could come into, you could encounter, bloody hell, I can't even get that out. Um, you could encounter uh, different enemies, different uh, like people trying to sell stuff, merchants and that. Um, so it's always good to wander around there and help you build up your XP as well again. Um, so yes, but you'll see that again shortly. Um, so thank you, sir, we'll do our best. Good luck out there, recruits. Okay, there's is our ragtag band of people so this is Jeanette Vasquez she's got our she's the heavy so she's got a heavy machine gun and a baseball bat um, next is this is misdiagnosis she's got an SMG and a blade weapon but she's gonna be our medic as I've said uh, this is Leroy Jenkins and he's got a rifle and handgun so because that's what his assault rifle and handgun is speciality and he's learning shotgun for Randy Jenkins and a hunting rifle. Now, obviously, I like having the snipers on the team. Love having them in XCOM 2 um, and XCOM. So, always happy to have a sniper. They do fucking save the day a lot for me, anyways. So, what we're going to do is first off, pick up this shovel. Uh, and we will give it to Jeanette. Shovels, you can use to dig up bits and bobs. So, we could dig up that grave, but. Let's not, let's be courteous. Um, I'll pick up the directional button, it shows you the mini map. So it shows you all the characters, all the locations on the mini map. And then you can obviously cut the world map, it shows you that there. So, um, I actually can level up my character more. So, um, let's just talk to him again because he can level us up. Hopefully. Why are you still here? Rick? Good luck out there. I want to level up, dude. Okay, I can't do anything just yet. But basically, Jeanette can level up because of her trait that she's got. Her traits. So let's get the character. Okay, so I can attrib uh, put an extra attribute point because of her quirk, um, which the benefit of it is plus five skill points and one attribute point at the game start. But I cannot equip trinket items. So she can't have, like you've got in the main game, you can have uh, trinkets, which she can equip, but she can't. Uh, she, this person can't, but everyone else can. So, and look, oh, she's got pipe bombs and everything. So let's give her a pipe bomb as a secondary. All right. Um, but I'm gonna just give the low dose pain relievers to misdiagnosis. Keep the weapons there and that. Um, Next, this diagnosis, she's got trauma kit, basic trauma kit. Use that if one of your characters goes down in battle. Um, obviously, first aid kit. Um, so yes, uh, a smokes, I don't know what they actually do, really. You can, at the character customization, you can say if your character smokes or not. 
as far as I know, it doesn't do anything other than that. Um, making up cool? No, because we're making up cool. Uh, so we'll transfer that to uh, Miss Lagos. God, I was fucking deluded then. Uh, that's what I was thinking. Just be trained forward. So, anyways, right, let's start from the beginning with Leroy Jenkins. Okay, so my quirk, or Leroy Jenkins' quirk, is I can't even pronounce that. So. I can get plus one to all attributes on even numbered characters, but minus one to all attributes on odd numbered character levels. So, huh. Um, yeah. They're all bad at the moment. Because I don't know why. There's a couple of even numbers there. No idea. Uh, anywho, so Leroy, he's a smart ass. He can do lock picking. He's good at assault rifles. He can barter. But hang on, and because he's the team leader, I always look at the team leader, he's got leadership. Leadership basically allows you to um, keep your team in order. Because sometimes, if the battle isn't going well, sometimes your characters will go off and do their own thing. Which is never good. They'll just run and gun, or do something stupid. So yes, next up is Randy Jenkins. Uh, he's my sniper, sniper expert. Um, sniper, even. Uh, he's secondary shotguns. But he can also repair toasters. Because that's good in a post apocalyptic world. Um, you find them throughout the game, and basically, when you fix them, you can um, get decent gear from there, really. So it's worth having, really. Uh, computer science, so you can work with computers, obviously. Uh, perception, and safe cracking. I'm really good at stating the obvious. So there we go. Jesus. Next is. Jeanette Vasquez, she's my heavy, so she's got demolitions, she's a hard ass uh, conversationalist. Uh, she can weaponsmith, so you can uh, you can customize your guns in this as well. Um, obviously she's heavy weapons. I also give her blunt weapons, so she can have like a baseball bat or a mallet later on in the game, and brute force so she can kick down certain things. Um, and then, finally, Miss Diagnosis, she's the field medic with uh, the special ability in, oh, she's got ability in machine guns. She's a kiss ash. She also animal whispers. You talk to, you can talk to, talk to animals, and they'll come and join you. Sometimes they don't help, but you know it's XP. You can level up. You can just talk to them and succeed. So that's the thing after me. Uh, bladed weapons are given her that, and then the surgeon, which she can help revive down players. So for. Jeanette Vasquez, I will. Ooh, I'm definitely gonna put up hard ass and the demolitions part, I believe. Because we're gonna get a new team member in a minute, and they focus on weaponsmithing. So we've got a layout there. So each of them costs two skill points, so I'm gonna keep those points. Attributes, I've done not done that yet, so do I give her strength? Let's do coordination. Ideal. Right. That's all done. Let's get going. Leroy Jenkins. Let's do this. So, this isn't going to be the most amazing one to begin with video. Um, this is like the introduction. So, from here, though, we will get back to the way. Right. Let's talk to this dude. Desert Ranger is scarred, but spotless combat armor stands at attention before the doors of the Ranger Citadel. He gives you a friendly salute. That's a salute. Um, I can kiss ass or hard ass. If I hard ass too much, he's gonna attack me, and I really don't want to piss off the Rangers, Desert Rangers. So I'm gonna kiss that because it's misdiagnosis again. Actually, I could do hard ass once and give Jeanette more. But she has to level up. She has got that. Oh, let's do kiss ass. But the general orders to tell you that. Oh, hang on. He say welcome to Ranger City Over recruits, but the general order me not to let you in. Before you finish your first investigation. But the general orders to let us in. Nice try, recruit, but it won't get you through this door. I like your sass though. Huh, thanks, man. Um, tell you what, I know you want to get inside so you can get your hands on the good stuff. Nelson's got a waiting for you in the armory. I got a little toy that just might tide you over. Interested? A little toy. He's gonna give us a gun. Um 
Not the greatest, but we'll take it for the purpose of this game now. Just, you know, an extra gun's not going to hurt, is it? Uh, move away from the door, we're coming in whether you like it or not. That's a bad move, because when he starts shooting at you in the face, that's never good. Let's get interested. You bet. What is it? I call her the Mississippi Mule, because she kicks like one. A double-barreled flintlock pistol. Now turn your nose to a fit red pace. As long as they're within 10 feet of you, uh, as long as she's the type of she was my go-to gal when I was on the patrol. Go-to gal. Um, but now I'm stuck here on door duty. She don't get much use. You can have her as long as you promise to put her to good use. We'll promise. Pretty sure that's a promise we can keep. Give us the gun. Right, here you go. Treat your gun. Should be the same year. Ideal. So, you have a new gun. Uh, this is our logbook, so it tells us what quest we've got. Uh, Inventory-wise, though, have we got it? Does the new one Jenkins got it? There you go, right, uh, inventory, yeah. So it's a shotgun. Uh, Randy? Yeah, Randy's got that. It's 12 gauge. It's 10 to 14 damage. Uh, that's 9 to 14. Just slightly more damage. I'll give it a, um, for now, I'll transfer that to Randy. Because it's shotgun ammo, I don't need that. And I'll give him the gun as well. For a minute, I think I'll be happy with him using his main pump action shotgun. Okay, next up is a merchant up here, or uh, yeah, a merchant. Kindly old woman in standard issue range garb. She seems occupied counting goods and organizing crates. Aside from the clothes, she's the picture of a loving grandmother. You could swear she's most faintly a fresh baked cookie. Always a welcome sight in a post office world, I'm sure. Well, hello, recruits. Welcome to Solvic Sundry. Oh, shit, I especially that. She was introducing herself. Bugger. Okay. Um, I'm going to summon some dudes. Happy to trade wherever you like and honor to make your acquaintance. Always nice to see new faces around here and a pleasure to make sure they have everything they need before they need to head out. Big bad work. Leroy, Leroy Jenkins. I'm not going to say that every time. I'm going to get exhausted from saying that. Uh, what do you have to trade? Nothing for yet today, huh? Uh, what do you have to trade? No. Nice to meet you too. So, Vic, what's your story? Oh, it's not so interesting. I grew up in a village near here, but I was already a grandmother of twice over when the Desert Rangers moved into the city. I saw how much good the Rangers were doing, and I wasn't up to much with my children moved to the... No, 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 I've lost my children. I wasn't up to much with my children. With my children moved to other villages to start their own families. It's a little unconventional for an old lady to go for basic training, but I pulled my weight and earned my star. Get it, girl. I may not be able to use from four hours above, but I've got loads of experience pe keeping people well fed and well clothed, and I can run a drill press for the best of them. So General Vargas, has me help Sergeant Nelson run the supply and I help Captain Mer Captain in the workshop now and again. So you can outfit us. Well, with essentials as tough as to find as they are, I can't just give them away for free. Fuck. Believe me, I wish I could, but we can keep our prices as close as to cost as we can for our rangers. You can stop by the basics whenever you're in the area and once you get clearance to enter the Citadel, you'll get access to some of our more valuable goodies. You have to talk to Sergeant Nelson about that when you get inside. Ranger Citadel, though, what about it? I do love this place nowadays. It used to be full of some kooky birds back when I was younger. Fellas seemed to worship pre-war junk, even if they didn't know what it was, and they wouldn't share none of it. Well, I shouldn't get too judgmental. I'm sure they thought they were doing right. What's General Vargas like? He's a modern-day pattern. He's a good mind for strategy and knows how to make the tough calls, but he's got a gentle side too. There you go. Um, what's Sergeant Nelson like? Oh, he's a great friend and a great quartermaster. We'll be all eating sand and wiping with cactus flowers without him. What's Captain Mer Captain like? She's the smartest person I've ever met, but bar none. She can whip up laser beams and water purification systems like a whip up ice. War! That's another important thing uh, in this game. Uh, when you travel the world map, um, it consumes your water. You have a water, uh, like a. Uh, I think they're bloody called canister. Uh, and that drains as you travel the desert because obviously it's heat, it's the Mojave. Um, so you can, um, you need to fill them up. And you fill them up with, over here, draw water, fill it up, canteen's have been with Wintot on. Right. Hey, Echo One. Mind picking up that can over there for me? I think there's some water in there. Oh, gee, I oh, wonder what's going to happen there. It's a goat right in front of us. So. I could talk to An I could use the animal whisper park on there. 
And we can get Aberforth with us. Uh, I don't know if he attacks, I can't remember if he does, don't think he does, he's just there for like shits and giggles. So, maybe his screams might scare them off. The enemies, that is. Right, let's do Animal Whisperer because I'll get XP for that. There's an 80% chance I can get this. Whee! 2 XP! Ideal. And I can get this tin can. Because we can sell it. If you actually think I was serious about wanting that can, I just wanted the goat to hit you in the ass. Oh, you're a lovely fucking rare sunshine. Uh, right. The dark piles like this, this is where we can dig up and hopefully get more uh, loot. So. I just love this game so much. Uh, scrap, that's what we use as currency. Scorch snuff box, we take that as well. So, yes, um, I just love this game. There's so much to it. I mean, graphically, it is bad. But this is a Kickstarter game, It, um, if I remember rightly. Um, and the whole reason I came about playing this actually was uh, from another game. Um, I played XCOM, Enemy Unknown and Enemy Within on the PlayStation 3. Never played the originals on PC back in the 90s. But I loved the XCOM games on PS3 and that. And then when I found out that there was um, an XCOM 2 coming out, and at the time it was PC exclusive, I was a little bit annoyed and I needed a fix. And then I seen this game. I was just in town looking, it was like 15 quid. Seen this game. Look, check that out online, and yeah, it's. Do you mean I've got a real thing for top-down like puzzle games, uh, like the XCOM setup? So I have this game. I've got Divinity: Original Sin, uh, which is also very good. Um, there was a game on the PlayStation Plus a couple months ago. Um, it's an agent game, but it's like basically the same sort of isometric thing. Uh, I love them. I, I love them. Even though you have like games like. Destiny or Deus Ex or Dying Light, you know, all oh, first persons. Fuck it, Knack. There you go. There's another game. I just looked down there. Um, I love these sort of games. They're so different. You don't get enough of them. I want more. So, and I'm happy to announce that they do actually have a um, Wasteland free in the works. When that's coming up, I do not know. I'm guessing it's another Kickstarter job. But there's a video on your line on YouTube. Check it out. It looks pretty decent. A lot is better than this. Right, so from here we can either lockpick or brute force. Uh, I've got a better chance with brute force, but I am going to go lockpick first. Let's just do this. But yeah, the game, this game, there's so much customization to it. You've got shitloads of guns on this. Like, seriously, like, throughout that, the game's long as well, which is also a bonus. Um, I can't look at uh, safety story guns, I'll think that. Um, but there's just so much to it. I love it. Like, there's so many different guns. You can outfit them to where you like it. The sniper rifles get really powerful. Your assault rifles get really powerful. The characters get more um, XP and level up, and that is just I love this game so much. But <laughs> there is a but. This game has a habit of crashing, which is a fucking nightmare when you're trying. Even when you're trying to load or save, it will crash. Just a pain in the ass, which reminds me, I am going to save because I don't want to do all this shit again. So there we go. If it fucking crashed, then I would have lost my fucking rack, I tell you. Right. Um, so we're going to go up here, and this is where we're going to get our next character Angela Death. She was at the uh, funeral of Ace. So we're going to get her introduction, join her, X to the world map, and then that'll be the first part done. Sorry, this is not really the most eventful, but look, I've introduced you to the game. You kind of know what it acts like, you know? Um, you'll see in the next game, next part, how it um, how it plays in its combat. What the hell happened here? Oh, there we go. Because okay. um, that's that's where it looked. It's very XCOM-like um, for its combat. Like, I don't know what this is. What is this? Oh, what the hell? Why is it all gone black? There we go. Jesus. Okay, right. Um, you never should have put down the wrench and picked up the gun. You should examine her, because that's not creepy. Let's talk. Sorry about the waterworks. I'm still pretty broke up over Ace. I'm Angie. You kids must be the new recruits old Vargas trained up. 
Lord, y'all just babies. You saw your ace's funeral. You knew him well? They all hurt, but this one. <laughs> ace wasn't even a ranger. Not first. He worked as a driver and mechanic for Farron Brigo up in Vegas. When Base Cochise started sending its death machines into the desert, Brigo sent Ace south to recruit robot fighters. We met him in courts. He pissed somebody off out there and they locked him up. We sorted that out. He started running with us, helping us fight Cochise. He never stopped. Vargas eventually gave him the uniform and the hat. But I don't think he ever formally signed on. He was just always there. And now he's... he's... God damn it, Ace! I knew this one was trouble, I knew it! You thought Ace's mission was trouble? He was working on the same thing Vargas has you working on. Trying to track down radio signals from beyond the edges of the map. All seemed a bit boring and scientific to me. But then Ace started saying he thought someone was following him. I asked him to let me come with him when I met him at Rail Nomads to give him the repeater units. But he told me to go back to base. He said he was just jumping at shadows because those radio broadcasts had spooked him. I should have gone with him. Why didn't you go with him? You heard any of these strange broadcasts? Ace played me some of them before he died. Hard to make out a lot of it, but what I heard made my hair stand on end. Some guy talking about turning men into machines. Like machines into men or some shit. But the crazy thing was, then he starts talking about us, the Rangers. Saying we're the cause of all the trouble in the world, and we need to be wiped out so this glorious future can be born. Who is this guy? Where is he? What the fuck does he have against us? Know any more about these repeating units? I don't really know the details. It's all a bunch of mumbo jumbo about transmitters and north south axis and signals bouncing off the clouds. Ask Woodson about it. He's our radio genius. Radio technician Wade Woodson? He's the guy that makes sure you can hear Vargas when you're out on patrol. Keeps the machines running and the signal clear. He'll also talk your ear off about the circuits and frequencies and I don't know what else if you let him. But be nice to him. He's your lifeline to the base. Tell me about Rail Nomads. Could be a nice little place. If the Atchisons and Topeka need a kiss to make up. I can't even remember what it's all about. But between them, they got enough old railroad tech that if they work together, they could give this area a real transportation system. Instead, seems like all they want to do is blow each other's heads off. Idiots. Where's Quartz? Yeah, not sure I can recall. Haven't been out that way in ages. I don't even know if it's still on the map. Ask Thrasher, he'd know. Where's Thrasher now? You better call him Gilbert now. Funny, back in the day, you just seemed like this big old growly bear. Dogs and ox and just about as articulate. But then he got all torn up during our fight with the robots from base for chiefs. We couldn't go out on patrol no more. Any other commander would have handed him his walking papers. But Vargas doesn't dump old friends. So he started him working in the museum. And once you know it, turns out the old bear has a knack for cartography. He's been gradually mapping our little corner of the wasteland ever since. Good as uncle. So these characters you'll meet in the base uh, later on in the game. So we're going to continue talking. Uh, so that's his bottle space coaches. From before the war, and the biggest fight the Rangers ever had. There was some crazy computer in there that kept spitting out robots and sending them off to kill people. We had one hell of a fight putting it down. Earned our stripes that day, literally. That's when I became Captain Death. The computer was making the robots. Yeah, the base coaches they are. I don't know what was wrong with it. Broken, I guess. It thought everybody was its enemy. It wanted to kill the whole planet. I see you have Ace's name statue tattooed in that heart on your arm. You noticed that, huh? Well, Ace always said I wore my heart on my sleeve. Yeah, me and Ace. We were more than just old army buddies, if you know what I mean. That's why it hurts so bad. That's why I want to come with you. Babies? Us? Sorry, but you are. As cute as little kittens. Y'all remind me of us. Snake, Razor, Thrasher, and me. Back when we were just starting out. 
thinking we were going to save the world for the future. Thinking none of us would ever die. Christ, I'm sorry. Don't listen to me. Youth is good. Optimism is good. If we all started out worn out and jaded like me, nobody would ever try to change the world. So you kids go ahead and give it a go. Maybe it'll work this time. What happened to Hellraiser? He's another one gone. Went out for a patrol a few weeks back and never came home. Don't know if he's dead or a wall. We're gone off to join the Scorpions. All anybody knows is he hasn't called in, and we haven't heard from anybody who's seen him. I miss old Hellraiser like blazes. Didn't talk much. Didn't make friends easy. Wasn't big on social graces. But he was as loyal as they come. And when the shit started flying, he was the guy you wanted at your back. He didn't win that name by accident. Sharp as a razor. Scary as hell. The Red Scorpions? You weren't briefed on those fucks during your training? Well, let me fill you in. You know when we left the prison and moved here to the Citadel? Well, the Scorpions were the jerks who moved into the prison when we moved out. Just a bunch of rangers back then, but they've been getting all organized. Call themselves a militia now. And they try to act like they're the desert rangers of eastern Arizona. That's a load of horseshit. Protection racket ain't the same as protecting people. They shake down all their towns for money. And if the locals don't kick in, they smash them up. The rangers aren't like that. We get by on donations and good old-fashioned scavenging. What can you tell us about Eastern Arizona? Basically everything between the prisoners... This is a lot of conversation. Uh, yeah, a lot. There are a few small towns and farms out there, which the Scorpions claim is their territory. Rangers used to patrol that area before we moved here, and we knew it pretty well. But a lot can change in 15 years. Who knows? Maybe it's all as clean and nice and crime-free as the Scorpions say it is. But I've got my doubts. Radiation clouds? Be right back. Cities. Big hot areas we can't get into without getting cooked to a crisp. The clouds move around some with the wind and the weather, but there are permanent hot spots on every side of us. North, south, east, and west. Until we started hearing those weird broadcasts, I kind of thought those clouds went on forever, and that Arizona was the last place on Earth. But maybe there's more people out there. Maybe the whole rest of the world's just fine, and we're the only ones in hell. Wouldn't that be a joke? Guys, why is someone at the door? <laughs> Turned out it was next door. Uh, how are you know General Vargas? Let's do it. Better than he'd like. Back in the day, the general was the craziest of us all. But somehow, after he brought down base the chief, he became the sanest. Now he's running the whole show and doing a damn fine job. Well, I'm still walking patrols and answering radio calls. Shows you how much ambition I got, huh? Uh, so General Vargas used to be called Snake. Well, like I said, he was one wild-ass son of a bitch back in the day. But I think the weight of his responsibilities has kind of squashed that out of him now. He hasn't been in a decent bar fight in, shit, a decade, maybe? Bye. Say, listen. Vargas asked you to look into Ace's death because he thought I was too upset to be professional about it. He didn't want me going off half cocked and shooting up all of Arizona looking for his killer. But I gotta find this guy. Ace and me, well, we've been fighting side by side for nigh on 20 years. I'm not letting him die unavenged. That's good to so, hear. Well, I know it's going against orders, but if you let me tag along and be in at the kill, well, I'll help you find your feet out there. Maybe give you a few pointers along the way. I may be old and slow. But I know the waist like the back of my hand. What do you say? So, Angela Beth, we are definitely going to have her up because she's a seasoned uh, ra desert ranger. And like I said, she has weapons with her that she can use. So, yeah, let's have her. Right. 
Jesus, that was a long time. No need to tell Barker twice at once. If anybody asks, I'm just helping you get oriented, all right? That's fine. Right. I'm going to cut this video in because...